Okay, Alternator Man here. I want to show you some tips on how to test your alternator. I get a lot of questions, a lot of emails on how do I tell what's wrong with my alternator. So this is what we're going to go through here today and what's wrong with different alternators. And I have two alternators here. These are both General Motors alternators. Uh, the one here on my left is what they call the CS130D. This was used from about 1995-ish for sure in 96 up until into the 2000s there's some overlapping uh, on this the one on the right is called the AD244 now the one on the right here is a bigger alternator a much bigger alternator uh, this AD244 or the AD series was used about from 99 on up uh, there's some crossover where they use them on different vehicles that just depends on the vehicle so it's about when they're used uh, the 80, the larger 8244 also came in a smaller size, in the CS130 size, but the CS130D did not come in a large case size like this. But, here's the good news, is if you have this mounting style with your two bolt, low, bolts down low here on many GM trucks and GM cars, you can interchange, put this larger 8244 that comes standard and 145 amps in place of the CS130D, that small case that only came in a 105 amp unit. So what we're going to be doing on this though is going over to test this, which is which is uh, uh, wrong with this thing, the bridge rectifier or the voltage regulator. Now identifying there is a small AD230 105 amp just like the CS130D. And here's a little thing on how you can tell the difference because from the side, the air venting, the bolt, the, the, the AD series looks real similar to the CS130D series. The big way to tell just from the outside visual is this rear cover. You'll see the three slots or this little half moon slot on the 130D with a battery post at one end. It just has three slots in it. That's the 130D. The AD series has a whole bunch of vented holes and the AD230 also just like this AD244 has four has all these vented holes so this is something you can look out for and what you do to one unique thing about these AD230s AD244s and the CS130D is that all of their electrics are right underneath here your voltage regular brush holder and bridge rectifier are underneath this black cover and I've already popped these off but what you would do to take these covers off is Put a screwdriver or some tool down in and rock it backwards and it unclips these little clips that snap over the frame. You're right here, here, here. You have to put a screwdriver underneath and, and you'd be able to pop these covers off and expose the components underneath. Same thing, I've already taken this cover off this AD series. You do that and you, you expose. Now what they did is the AD is the newer series and the CS130D is the older series. GM had a lot of trouble with this bridge rectifier right here. Your negative and positive diodes are stacked right on top of each other in this bridge rectifier. So it gave GM all kinds of trouble with burned up rectifiers. When they upgraded to the AD series, they separated the rectifier into a positive half and a negative half, separating them out, giving them much better cooling. Some of the other components, like the brush holder, are real similar. They almost look the same, just the difference with the AD is there's a tolerance ring built onto the brush holder that goes down into the bearing where the CS130D didn't. So although they look real similar, they're not really interchangeable. Now here's the voltage regulator where you plug in the voltage regulator on the 130D here and the voltage regulator on the AD series. Their plugs are pretty much identical where they can plug into. So what we're going to be doing here is going over to test the brushes. You have your rotor that spins in the center and your brushes make contact on your rotor. Just in both these are the same. And the, 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 the rotor that spins in the center is an electromagnetic coil with one wire connected to one end of the slip ring where one brush runs, the other end of the wire connected onto the other slip ring where the other brush goes, and they're basically the same between the AD and the CS130D. Now, what we want to do is, is we're going to test this rotor to make sure this rotor is good. And if you look at this, you'll be able to see that your brushes, those two brushes, come out these metal clips. This little metal clip here is on the bottom is connected to one brush 
and then that goes right to the ground because this clip clip is touching the ground frame. This other clip, the upper clip for your upper brush, goes to the voltage regulator. And that's how these alternators are turned on and off, is the voltage regulator senses the state of charge of the battery, and when the battery gets low, the voltage regulator senses it, and it sends power into this positive brush, thereby turning the alternator on and making it generate power. So this is the first thing we're going to do is check the brush. And what we'll do is set that up with our battery. And I've just taken a battery and I have a, I have a negative wire from the battery and a positive wire from the battery. Let me get my battery set up here. And here we go. All we do is take the negative wire and we can cl clip it anywhere here on this alternator because this ground brush is going to be connected to here. So we make sure we have a good connection with a negative. And then we're going to go, let me get the right negative, wrong negative. And then we're going to go to the positive. Now, what we want to do is check to make sure that this rotor is good, that that rotor coil that is wound up inside the rotor is not broken or the brushes aren't broken or whatever. We want to make sure those are making good contact. So to do that, what we do is we put the negative on the frame and then we touch the positive on this upper clip. And when we touch this, I can see a tiny spark in there. It's kind of hard to see sometimes. You touch it on and pull it off and you'll see a spark. And that spark tells me that that brush is making contact and that rotor is good. So the next step after this is to take it to the tester or if you don't have a tester you'll have to put it on your motor and run it for this step. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay now what I've done is I've set this CS130D alternator up on our tester. And I'm not going to be using any test controls because this would be done as though you're out in the field you're putting this on your vehicle and you're going to set it up. So what I've done is I just have my battery here, just a regular battery sitting here, and I'm connecting this up where I'm going to put a little positive jumper, positive jumper to the positive, and negative to the ground, and then this is going to be my other positive. Now what we're going to do, be doing is full fielding this alternator. What that means is we're going to bypass the voltage regulator here. We're taking the voltage regulator out of the equation. Because we have to determine what is wrong. Is it the voltage regulator or is it the bridge rectifier that's bad? So what we're going to do is bypass the voltage regulator and take it right out of the equation. And to do that, we're going to be setting up and touching on our brush, our positive brush again here. The negative through the ground is already grounded. And when we touch this on this positive, this alternator should run full blast. Now I already tested this one. I know this bridge rectifier is bad in this alternator. So we're going to run it and test it. And you're going to hear the noise that a bad bridge rectifier makes. They sound terrible. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. They get kind of loud. And what I'm going to do, now this tester is not very powerful, so I cannot full field it. When I run this tester through this, through the equipment, it's just a sampling tester, which means it does not give it full power. When I'm running off this battery like this, going in this alternator, I'm running full power. So this all this machine can't run this very well, and it may even blow a fuse. So what we'll do is I'll, once I touch this positive onto this brush, it's going to run full blast, and you're going to hear what a bad bridge rectifier sounds like. You hear that growling sound? You hear that horrible sound? A real growling sound. That's what it sounds like. So that is a bad bridge rectifier. Now, when we test that like that, let me shut this off. When we test that like that, now we've determined that this bridge rectifier is bad. To change that bridge rectifier, you'd unsolder these three leads and take off these screws here, take the screws out of the voltage regulator, and you would then lift off that whole assembly once you get these unsolder.